What is up guys, Media Master Minard here today coming back at you with another video and today we're going to be reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home. So I was able to go out and see this movie with my family and honestly I was really curious kind of what direction they're going to be bringing the Marvel Cinematic Universe after the events of Avengers Endgame. And honestly, I have to say this movie really reassured some of the doubts I had in my head. I thought it was an excellent film, and let's kind of get into the specifics. And this movie kind of started off with a big WTF moment between Robin, oh, whoa, I meant Agent Hill, um, and Nick Fury, and there's a random hero at the time that shows up, and we're kind of like, whoa, he's kind of fighting this like Titan giant thing. And that was kind of how they started and they kind of go back to Spider-Man's universe or Spider-Man's neighborhood. And we get to see that there are definitely effects from the blip, they call it. And the blip is referring to what happened when Thanos snapped his fingers and everyone disappeared. So there's definitely ramifications to that. And I like how they addressed those and they didn't really just blow them by. People who were kind of out of the world for a while are younger than some of their younger siblings if that makes sense their younger siblings have grown older than them and all of those different possibilities are really addressed and so Peter is still in school and we get to see him kind of being called by Nick Fury to to help out with all the problems that are going on but he's kind of like hey I just kind of want to be the friendly neighborhood spider-man and he ghosts Nick Fury and all I'm gonna say is don't ghost Nick Fury, don't do it guys. It's not a good idea. But basically the whole premise of this movie kind of is Spider-Man is going on a class trip to Europe and he has this kind of master plan that hey I want to romance MJ and I kind of want to make her my girlfriend, I want to tell her how I feel. But as he's planning on doing that, as he's about to do that, a giant water monster attacks and this aforementioned random hero comes in and saves the day and then we're able to find out later on that this hero is in fact Mysterio and so Mysterio has been fighting these titans there's five different elementals they call them and he's been working with Nick Fury and Agent Hill and they want Spider-Man's help to take down the last one, which is the Fire Elemental, which is the most powerful of them all. And one thing that I didn't really buy at the time of watching the movie is, since these Elementals are such a threat to the Earth, why didn't they call in one of the more powerful superheroes? And they kind of actually do address that in the movie, and then later on in the movie it makes more sense, so that really actually rectified itself but I did think they gave pretty lame excuses for why these other heroes wouldn't have come to help out and really would have solved all the movie's problems. So, I don't know, that was just kind of one little nitpicky thing that I didn't really like. But I'm gonna stop there with the story elements because honestly anymore, and it's gonna be spoiler territory, and I do think the movie maybe did have a little bit of a predictable plot twist. The way that this plot twist unfolded was actually not how I expected it. So they did a really good job with that. And overall, I thought the story was pretty darn engaging. Like I mentioned earlier, they really do a good job of addressing a lot of the problems that arise at the end of Avengers Endgame. And they deal with Peter kind of grieving well they show that he really is grieving for mr stark and he doesn't really know what's going to happen or what he should do without mr stark and he's passed down mr stark's glasses edith that kind of control all of mr stark's assets and it's kind of like hey what am i going to do and they do a really good job of addressing that and spider-man's kind of lost and a lot of other people are kind of like eh, what's going on and I also thought they did a great job of catching the vibe of those awkward high school years where you're kind of like, eh, I don't know if I should talk to this girl or not, how I should express my feelings. People aren't really good at that. They just did a really good job of catching that, that vibe during this movie. And I thought another vibe they did a good job, I promise I'll stop using that word, another feeling I thought they did a good job of capturing was how Spider-Man just wants to be a kid. 
and he doesn't really want to be a superhero. And I thought it was something that was very similar to the Jessica Jones season 3 theme, how Jessica doesn't really want to be a hero, but she kind of understands that she has to be. And I thought they kind of did a really good job of, of portraying that in this movie as well, albeit in a very different setting. <laughs> the acting was excellent as always, and honestly, Tom Holland is arguably the best Spider-Man. I still do think Tobey Maguire might be the best in my opinion because I thought he did a really good job of portraying kind of nerdy, nerdy, uncool Spider-Man, but I do think Tom Holland captures the fun vibe of Spider-Man the best out of everyone, and I'm sorry Andrew Garfield, you just weren't that good of a Spider-Man, even though I did think the Amazing Spider-Man movies were pretty decent, actually. And I don't know about the whole Zendaya thing as an actor more so. I honestly just don't think she does a very good job. That's just kind of my opinion. She just seems a little bit out of place and awkward, and I know that's kind of the vibe they're going for, but I guess I'm just not really feeling it. And Overall, I think this was just a really good film, guys. A big part of it was, hey, I'm, I'm Spider-Man, and I'm trying to deal with the fact that Iron Man's not around, and I can't be a replacement to him, but how do I carry on his legacy? And I thought this film did a great job of that. The CGI was really, really fantastic, and it really needed to be in this movie because a lot of the movie deals with, I can't actually say what it deals with, but there's a reason why the CGI needs to be as good as it is, and I'm not going to spoil that for you guys. And so we kind of get an idea of where, I guess, Phase 4 or whatever we're calling it for the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going with those end credits. I mean, those were insane, guys. You can tell they've definitely got big plans for the future of the MCU, and I'm really excited to see where they take it. But I want to know what you guys think about Spider-Man Far From Home. Did you like the movie? Did you hate it? What do you think is coming next for the MCU? And what do you want to see happen next for the MCU? Let me know the answer to all those questions down in the comments below. I'm going to leave a link to my Twitter down in the description below also so you can find out when I post a new video. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out more movies, TV, video game, and anime content. And until then, this is Master Menard. Signing off. Now, now look at the top, I'm going crazy, who wearing the crown? Scoodly bop, doodly bally, doodly down. Uh.